I hold here the two most popular new Mac computers on this earth. The M4 MacBook Air and the M4 MacBook Pro. They've got the same chip, they've got the same RAM, both have Thunderbolt 4 and the same speed SSD. Hopefully, I'm gonna be able to pick apart a reason why you might want one of these over the other. I said this another time, but I'm a little upset with Apple about just how good this new MacBook Air holds up against the Pro. I've always considered myself a Pro user. My first degree was in graphic design in the 1990s. Oof. And now I'm earning like a third of my income in video production here on YouTube. But as you'll see here in a minute, I continue to throw what I thought was a pro workload at this thing and it just keeps gobbling it all up and asking for more. Am I? No. Am I a basic computer user? Here's the setup. These two laptops have the exact same M4 configuration. The MacBook Air with the M4 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. MacBook Pro, also the M4 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, same RAM, same storage. The insides of these computers are the same. They have the same level of raw processing power. Well, that is until things start getting really hot. Ooh, that effect worked. Pretty well. Because when we start talking about where these computers are not the same, a lot of reviewers will go straight to the fact that the MacBook Air, in order to be so small and thin and light and precious, does not have a fan. This thing is just a sealed aluminum box, which means when you start asking the MacBook Pro to do really hard stuff for long enough, it'll just spin up its fans and dump out the heat around this hinge here. And see those little vents that are conspicuously missing on this one. Where MacBook Air's only course of action to prevent heat from continuing to build up is to slow itself down. To literally compare compute each CPU core at a lower frequency, and it'll keep slowing itself down and down and down until it reaches an equilibrium with the amount of heat that it's able to dissipate through the magic of conduction. A little radiation and the slightest bit of natural convection through its aluminum case. Had to cut that up a lot, couldn't say that all at once. Which is why, before we move into testing, I have to do one quick thing. You may have seen a video a bit ago where I opened up this MacBook Air and I installed a thermal bridge between the back of its motherboard and the bottom of its case. This essentially creates a direct connection, a heat pipeline, if you will, from the CPU down to the bottom of the computer. So with that thermal bridge in place, it can much more effectively dump heat out onto my desk or onto my lap. Anyway, I know not a lot of people are gonna wanna risk voiding their warranty, so I wanna compare these two computers in their default state. So these thermal pads are coming out. I'm gonna put these back in for a later video where I try to see if I can get similar performance between this computer and this computer. So make sure you do subscribe for that sweet, sweet content. When I say subscribe, now the little subscribe button down there glows around the edges. That's new, that's cool, click it. Okay, so we've established same processors, same engine under the hood. Let's talk briefly about where these differ. What do you get for that extra 400 bucks to go pro? You do get the word pro embossed in the bottom. The MacBook Air has just two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports on one side, then a MagSafe charging port and a headphone jack, and that's it. The MacBook Pro has those same things, plus a third USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port on the other side, along with a full-sized HDMI port and a super fast SD card slot. Why is that a slot and not a port? I will say the HDMI port comes in handy kind of a lot for me. Sometimes that's just to set it down next to the TV in the living room and jack in. Sometimes at an event site, I'll use a TV on a rolly cart as a monitor. Funny enough, rarely do I use it as a monitor on my desk because I'm always plugged into this studio display and that uses a Thunderbolt port, not an HDMI. For me though, even having those three USB-Cs and an HDMI are still not enough ports. So I'm already using a dongle, either for a mechanical keyboard because USB-A or a game controller, or just because I have too many things plugged in. External NVMe drive, I might wanna plug in my phone, whatever, I seem to always need more ports. So I'm living that dongle life no matter which computer I'm using. And any good dongle typically has an SD card slot and an HDMI on it. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, but that's just me. Maybe this has the right number of ports for you. And maybe that's the reason you want the Pro. It's a good enough reason. I think the next major buff in the Pro category would be this screen. And this is gonna be really hard to capture this on video because for one, YouTube can only show you 60 frames per second maximum anyway. And half of the magic of this thing is its 120 hertz refresh rate. And beyond that, I'm shooting this video in a cinematic 24 FPS. So I know you can't see the exquisite smoothness of this Pro Motion display, but it is exquisite. MacBook Air's 13 inch screen comes in at 4.2 million pixels versus just a hair under 6 million pixels for the 14 inch Pro. MacBook Pro is over twice as bright when using HDR. Actually looking at this, I have to crank down my camera settings just so it doesn't blow it out. The MacBook Pro is over twice as bright when using HDR. It really doesn't come across on video. It's really hard to tell. You can see this is brighter. It doesn't look like it's a lot brighter. It is. 
it's strange. So there may be some argument to be made that if you work from the outdoor section of a coffee shop during the day, you might want access to a brighter screen. Like I said, 120 hertz on the Pro, the MacBook Air merely refreshes at 60 hertz, which is 60 frames per second. And I had a commenter who said, this is absolutely a deal breaker for him, which I found odd, but to each their own, I'm old. It's very smooth. The ProMotion display is very smooth. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know, maybe coming from a 24 FPS world, 60 frames per second is already very smooth. Whatever, it's noticeable in Minecraft. That is true. Both of these computers can rock 32 chunks of view distance without any stuttering at all. Again, this video is in 24 frames per second, so it'll look like that's stuttery, but it's actually very smooth. Also, the speakers on the Pro model are substantially better. They're deeper, they're louder. Honestly, a little miraculous for how small this thing is. The MacBook Air has less speakers and no little vents on the side to let the treble flow through. This one also doesn't have the same force canceling subs whatever that means, that the Pro has. It's still super loud for a laptop though, the Air. So good speakers, even better speakers. But I think something that might be important to talk about when comparing these two is that, and especially for mind numbing corporate bureaucratic work, which I think might be the majority of work now, I had a particularly busy morning today, changing up some truss plans in AutoCAD, going back and forth on emails with a freight forwarder about some aluminum truss we have currently on the ocean in a shipping container on its way here from China. Hate those tariffs. I had a video call with the space team over teams. And when it comes to white collar soul sucking desk work, these two computers feel identical to me because I'm hooked to the studio display, whichever one I'm using. So I don't even see the super smooth Mac OS animations for the ProMotion screen. Studio display is also 60 Hertz. So if what you do on a computer is comprised of Microsoft Office apps, email, an internet browser, messages, even AutoCAD and strangely Final Cut Pro, these two computers will offer an indistinguishable experience. I mean that. I've got no dog in this fight. I don't care which one of these you buy. Like, yes, the MacBook Air can start to thermal throttle if you push it too hard for too long. But it turns out that these M4 processors are so good and so efficient that it takes way more than it ever used to to get it to start throttling. For instance, there is quite literally no noticeable difference when editing 4K videos shot in H.265, even this video that you're watching now, which is comprised of two 4K camera angles that need to be playing back simultaneously. The edit is perfectly smooth on both of these computers. And it's gonna take me I don't know, something like three or four hours to edit this video after it's done being shot. And that won't matter. MacBook Air is not going to heat up. It's not going to throttle. I keep pointing that out in these videos because historically, this has never been true. Well, prior to the M3 processor family, anyway. You could not edit multicam 4K projects at full resolution without proxies on a base model Mac. You just couldn't. It's a revolution, which takes me back around to my earlier point that even though a majority of my work takes place on a computer, I can do all of it on the stupid MacBook Air. I don't want to like this computer. I want to need the beefier one. I want to need my M4 Max MacBook Pro. It's an existential crisis over here at the Space Warehouse. I'm gonna keep this one anyway. So many props for this video. Anyway, I know not everyone's a video editor. Here are some other things I thought might be hard yet normal things to do rather than just cinebenching these two things until this one slows down. Because yes, in synthetic benchmark programs, the MacBook Air will quickly overheat and be quite a bit slower than the MacBook Pro. That said, let's try to heat this thing up without doing that. I have here both of these computers loaded up with 537 raw photos taken with my Sony a7 IV. These are 33 megapixel images and I'm gonna export them all to JPEG. This should pin all the CPUs near 100% and we'll see just how valuable the fan is on the MacBook Pro. Spoiler alert, it's valuable. These are the same photos on both computers and I'm asking them to crunch them down to 60 60% quality JPEG photos. This is gonna take a while, so I'm speeding this up, but while these are exporting, I have this MX Power Gadget app running. These graphs are showing the percent of utilization, so how much CPU it's using. They're showing the temperature of the CPU and GPU. We have the speed that the CPUs are running at, the megahertz, or the gigahertz. And then at the top, we have total power used by the motherboard in watts. But you can see, as the MacBook Air heats up, it's forced to slow down the processor speed. 100C is about as high as it's willing to go. As the MacBook Pro heats up, it does actually throttle a little bit also because it takes some time for the fans to spin up and get rid of that initial blast of CPU heat. Once it does, it finds its footing and starts to cruise through the export. You can really see this in the power graph. The MacBook Pro is putting out between 10 and 20 watts
watts throughout the export, where the air pretty quickly drops down to between three and seven watts because it's trying not to add more heat into its system than it's able to release. And that results in this whole process taking five minutes on the air versus three minutes on the MacBook Pro. And we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that this five minute process would have been a 15 minute process back in the Intel Mac age. And actually with an Intel MacBook Air, it probably would have taken a half hour. So it's things like that, sustained efforts that crank the processors and keep them cranked for a while. That's where the actual performance differences lie in these two computers. Knowing which processes actually do that is the key. Office work, doesn't heat it up. Even video editing doesn't. Because with those things, the hard parts happen in little bursts, and the CPUs can actually cool down between little bursts. Same with image editing, graphic design, AutoCAD. None of those things heat up either of these computers. So how about gaming? The new Assassin's Creed Shadows game is out. It's AAA, it's got ray tracing and all the hard stuff, and you'd think this would be another area where heat buildup really starts to cause problems for the air. I certainly would have thought that. So I set up a test. I set up a second screen just to monitor the computer's vitals. First, the base model M4 MacBook Pro. And sure, you do have to have the graphics set to low because the GPUs in this thing just aren't that powerful. But everything looks great. It's plenty smooth. It plays great. This would be a fine way to spend a flight to New York. Immersed in feudal Japan. Temps do get up there, but not to the point of throttling. You can see that the CPU frequency stays pegged onto the MacBook Air. And even though this computer has the same specs, same CPU and GPU, same RAM, it's like the game knows this is a bad idea and it warns you when you start up that this computer is not officially supported. Let's see how it does anyway. It is slightly less smooth than the MacBook Pro. At first, that's curious because looking at the temps, this definitely never gets hot enough to trigger the thermal throttling. But then looking a little closer, it's actually fundamentally running the game, Just it's just running it differently. Put the graph side by side, the MacBook Pro is using a ton of performance core CPU and it's running at a total of 16 watts for the motherboard. The MacBook Air uses almost no performance cores and it's got the efficiency cores pegged to 100. They use less power. It's only running at about six watts of power, less than half the amount of electricity running through the computer to play the game. The MacBook Pro is actually running a lot hotter, but its fan is running so it's keeping itself just under the thermal threshold. And it's really interesting how these two computers are just making these crazy adjustments to run the game and provide almost the same experience. The MacBook Pro was smoother and it was able to go to 1080p. With the Air, I was playing at 720p. So if you don't mind playing AAA games with essentially Nintendo Switch graphics, and I don't, but again, I'm old. Surprisingly, the Air can handle Assassin's Creed Shadows. I think the next most common question I see in the comments about these computers is about RAM. And specifically, is 16 gigs enough RAM? Well, well, just in the last cycle of updates for these Mac computers, for the M3, they were still making everything with eight gigs of RAM for the base models. And those computers worked, although I would agree that eight gigabytes is definitely not enough RAM. RAM compression keeps getting better all the time on Mac OS, and to show that, check this out, I've devised one more test. I'm just gonna open everything at once, everything I use. Outlook, Safari, Apple Mail, Messages. We're keeping an eye on the RAM down here at the bottom. Photos app, Lightroom, Photoshop, Pages, Teams, Final Cut Pro, even AutoCAD. We can wait for all this stuff to load. So we have all of this stuff running and take a look at the RAM down here where it says swap used zero bytes. That means we have not run out of RAM. Let me go to some websites just to make sure that we continue to stress this thing. Here, we'll just open up a whole bunch of videos. We'll even make sure they load and play. So you can see down here now, it's got a bunch of RAM compressed. It's got four and a half gigabytes of RAM compressed, but it has not hit the swap. We still have plenty of RAM available. When you switch back to other programs, it can decompress that RAM faster than you can notice it happening. So 16 gigs of RAM is adequate for today's computers. I will say though that one of the biggest future proofing measures you can take is extra RAM. The M1 processors, five year old processors are still fast enough for everyday usage. It's just that eight gigs of RAM in an M1 computer is what makes it feel like a potato. In a world where Apple's cheapest, most entry level computer can render the entire season of Love Island in real time without using proxies to edit, I may not be a power user after all. That was a lot. I hope this helped make a decision or two I don't expect really anyone to buy Apple computers through a link in the description, but they're down there. Goodbye. Well, that is until things start getting really hot. Woo.